Today, I'm making one of my personal favorites. They're called hermit bars, and some people call them hermit cookies. They hail from New England. So let me show you what we're gonna use first. So we're gonna use a couple of large bowls, and we also are gonna need salt, cinnamon. I'm using um, a pumpkin pie spice. You can use that, or you can use a nutmeg. Also, ground cloves, ground ginger, baking powder, baking soda, flour, raisins, brown sugar, butter, molasses, and eggs. So let's get started. The first thing I always do is preheat the oven. So I've turned the oven on to 350. So that can be preheating. It'll be already warmed up when we're ready to go in the oven. The next thing I always like to do is prepare my pans so that they're ready when we're ready to put whatever our dough is into the pan. So for this particular recipe, we need to grease and lightly flour. A, you can use a, what they call a jelly roll pan or a cookie sheet. They're both about the same. I love these sprays. Makes things so quick and easy. So you wanna make sure that you cover it all. And then we're just going to lightly dust the pan with just regular all-purpose flour. And then I usually like to go over to the sink and just kind of shake it around. Keeps the mess to a minimum that way. And then we can set that pan aside and we'll be all ready. Next, we're going to mix all but the uh, sugar of the dry ingredients. So we'll start with the flour and let's see if we can just do it the easiest by getting it right out of the bag. And you want to uh, try to make them level. And we're going to do four cups of flour. So next, we're going to add the uh, clove, and the clove is going to, the clove is going to be the only one that we're not going to use a full teaspoon of. The clove is a very, very powerful spice, but it adds a super flavor. So the clove, we're going to add just one quarter of a teaspoon of clove and you wanna go ahead and make that level, and all of these spices will be level teaspoons. So one quarter of a teaspoon of clove. I love the smell of clove, but again, it's a very, very powerful spice. The rest of uh, the dry ingredients will all be one teaspoon, so that makes it easy to remember. So we'll start right here with the baking powder, and again, level on each one of these. So one teaspoon baking powder. I always like to set the items aside so that you don't forget that you have already put that ingredient in. One of the baking soda. One of the ground ginger. And again, this is pumpkin spice. You can use uh, pumpkin spice if you'd like, or nutmeg, whichever one you have on hand. And if you're like me and you like cinnamon, I'm actually going to add two uh, teaspoons of the cinnamon just because I love cinnamon.
Now we have all of those dry ingredients except for the brown sugar. And we're going to mix these around so that way we know that the flavors are all dispersed evenly throughout. Now we're gonna set the dry ingredients aside and we're going to take two sticks of butter, which equals one cup of butter. And we're gonna put these into a bowl. And we're gonna to add to this, we're going to add two cups of brown sugar. And if you leave them out at room temperature, it helps. You don't want them too soft, but you want them uh, a little bit more uh, pliable. So now we're going to add two cups of brown sugar. You can use light brown or dark brown. down. We want them to be packed cups. So we're going to add two cups of brown sugar to that. And next we're going to just gently uh, blend this all together. And what we're going to do is add to that, we're going to add two eggs. These are the uh, farm fresh eggs here from the farm. And we're going to also add two thirds of a cup of molasses. And I recommend using the dark molasses. This is really thick. I don't know if you've ever heard the expression, thick as molasses. Well, this is where it comes from. It's really thick, you know, thicker than uh, like a maple syrup. It is dark like tar and we're going to mix this all together okay so now we have all of the wet ingredients all blended together and now we're going to slowly and gradually add in the dry uh, ingredients and mix them all together. So the history behind this recipe, actually uh, they've been able to date it back to at least the 1700s. And back in the 1700s in New England was a big uh, marine and a sailing community. And so the women used to make this for their husbands. They would make up these uh, molasses bars, as they would call them, and be, and put them, cut them up and put them in tins because they have a very long shelf life and they will stay nice and moist and just absolutely yummy. And so hopefully they would last throughout their trip. So whenever they, uh, you know, felt that they wanted something sweet or wanted to, a reminder of home, they'd open up their tin and they would take out some of these fabulous hermit bars and they would enjoy them. So I have quite a bit more to add in, but it's really turning into a lovely, lovely brown color. So I've got all of the dry ingredients now mixed in, and it's a beautiful, um, it's a soft dough. So now we're going to hand also mix in two cups of raisins. And you definitely don't want to do this part with a mixer because it, you want to keep those raisins whole. Okay, and the last
last thing we need to do now is we're going to transfer this dough to the pan and we're going to probably put a little flour on the top once we get it here and we want to evenly disperse it out into the pan and we're going to place it in the oven again at 350 degrees and it's, they're only going to take about 17 to 18 minutes to cook. And then we're going to let them fully cool before we cut them and enjoy them. So I've got them all spread out nice and even on the pan. They smell terrific. I'm going to just put these in the oven and I'll see you when they come out. It's been about 19, 20 minutes and I think they're done. Let's take a peek. Oh, the smell is just amazing. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful. So now we're gonna let these completely cool before we cut them. And they are just gonna be absolutely wonderful. I recommend everybody making this recipe. See you in the next video.